Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet, and the beta version of the much hyped release of Elementary OS, that is Elementary OS 6, codename Odin, is out now for developers to test the system. Elementary OS is a Linux distro popular for its clean and pristine look. The distro has a gorgeous desktop with brilliant design aesthetics. Elementary team has been working on this release for over a year now, giving us glimpses of all new features and updates coming to the new release in their monthly blog. Now that the beta release is out, I'm really excited to check out all those features in a live system. Now since it's a beta release, we'll not be doing a complete in-depth review. That we'll do once the final release is out. But in this video, we'll be looking at all major changes coming to Elementary OS 6. Alright, so let's start. Now Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu LTS release and Elementary 6 uses Ubuntu 20.4 LTS as its base. The Linux kernel is at version 5.8 and unlike many other distros in 2021, Elementary OS 6 has not made the switch to Wayland yet and it still uses XOR as the display server. Alright, now let's take a look at all major changes. First is the new Elementary installer. For previous versions of Elementary OS, the installation was handled by Ubuntu's Ubiquiti installer. But this time, Elementary has teamed up with System76 team to create a brand new installer that shares the same simplistic yet elegant design aesthetic of Elementary OS. This is the new installer of Elementary OS. It has the text on the left side with corresponding options on the right side. The first option is to select the system language. If the chosen language has multiple different style or dialect, then you get a sub-menu to select the preferred country. Next is the keyboard layout. Here also there is a primary menu for language and then sub-menu for various layouts available for that selected language. Next is the installation type. Here there are three installation modes available. Try is for live boot to test the system before installation. Clean install is like auto installation. You just have to give a disk and the installer will format the disk automatically and create required partition and then install the system. Third is the custom or advanced option. If you are planning for dual boot configuration and want to install elementary on a specific partition or drive, then choose this option. Unlike the name, the advanced mode is also pretty easy to use. Just click at a partition you get a callout suggesting relevant Linux partition, file system, mount point and an option to format. Click on the format slider to format the partition. Similarly, you can click on another disk partition to create a boot partition for bootloader. And that's all. If you want, you can create a swap partition as well. If you are familiar with Gparted disk partition app, you can do this partitioning using the app as well. Link to the app is also available. Now, once you are done, Click next and the installation will begin. Now after the installation is complete and you reboot the system, then you are prompted to set up a new user account. Create an account and then log in with that same user account. And now you get to the desktop. Since it's a beta release, you get a caution that you are using an early access build, which should not be used in a production environment. All right, so that was the installation process using the new elementary installer. All right, the next change is the new refreshed desktop. On first glance, you may not find any difference, but there are many subtle changes to the desktop. First is the system font that has been changed from Open Sans to Inter font. Inter is the same font used by Zorin OS as well. Both fonts are pretty similar in looks and therefore you may not notice this change. However, there is a change in the text rendering settings from RGB to grayscale. So text have more contrast and is little easier to read. The icon set remains the same. The notification center has been completely revamped with a new notification server. It now shows separate bubbles for each notification under the notification menu. Another subtle change is that the corner of windows for applications now have rounded corners instead of straight edges. Apart from that, the other major desktop elements like the top bar, dock, application menu and workspaces remains the same. Alright, the next big change is the new dark mode. Now dark mode is something that is available in every major Linux distros these days. It was there in Elementary's previous release as well, but the implementation was little different. In Elementary 5.1, there was a toggle switch on every application to set it to dark mode. Now in Elementary OS 6, the toggle switch for individual app is gone. And now you have option for system wide dark mode, which is in the appearance tab under desktop settings. This makes the entire desktop, the menus, background of application, dock, everything to a darker background. 
The dark theme is implemented pretty well and gives the distro a completely new look. Another new setting that lets you further personalize the desktop is the new accent color option under appearance tab. With this setting, you can change the color of highlighted text, toggle switches and various elements of the desktop. There are 10 different accent colors available to choose from. Our right, next change is the touchpad gestures. If you use a laptop, then you'll find this feature pretty useful. Support for multi-finger gestures started with the release of GNOME 40. And now all major distros are including this feature in their 2021 releases. Though elementary OS is not a bleeding edge distro and the latest technology is not always available immediately. But I'm glad elementary OS has been working on this and included this feature in their upcoming release. One difference between the implementation of multi-finger gesture on elementary compared to other Linux distro is that with GNOME desktop or Zorin OS, there's no option to customize these gestures. In elementary 6, you can customize these gestures from the gesture settings under mouse and touchpad. All right, next, let's talk about major software changes. First, the Files app. Now, Files app has got a new navigation mode. Now there's dual action for mouse click. Instead of double click, a single click on a folder will open the folder. But for opening files or running an app, you need to do double click. The hybrid action on mouse will improve your navigation in Files app, making it faster. The overall design of uh, the Files app is also more flat now. All right, next is the Settings app, where there are many changes. Some categories have been completely redesigned. For example, the About category is replaced by System that gives you information on operating system, hardware, and firmware, along with links to update the system as well. The HIDPS scaling under Display setting now gives you additional 3x scaling option for higher resolution screen. And of course, Desktop categories has a lot of changes. The Appearance and the dock, they all are redesigned to add new features and the hot corners is replaced by multitasking tab. All right, finally, the last change is the flat pack for App Center. If you don't already know, Flatpak is a new packaging format for Linux app built to simplify app installation in Linux distro. The aim is to have one standard package format that work in all Linux distro. Now with Flatpak for App Center, all elementary packages are moving from deb format to Flatpak packaging format and support for Flatpak is available by default. But these apps are hosted on elementary's own Flatpak repository and not on Flathub, which is the app store for Flatpak packages. There are multiple benefits of using Flatpak packages. I have made a detailed video on this topic in the past. You can check that for more information on this. The link is in the description below. All right, so that was all in this video. The final release of elementary OS is still few months away. This is the beta release and whatever I have tested so far, it still contains a lot of bugs and there are many broken things. And therefore we are not checking the performance aspect. As I said, we'll check out each feature in detail when the final release is out. So if you have not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon to get immediate notification every time a new video is uploaded. Alright, so thank you for watching this video. Let me know which one is your favorite feature of Elementary OS 6 in the comment section. A huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me. Alright, thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.